The M4 Sherman medium battle tank was one of the most iconic fighting vehicles of the Second World War, and a defining image of the American Army in Europe. In the decades following the war, the Sherman's reputation deteriorated to the point where many considered it the worst tank of the war. A one-on-one -on -one tank battle in an open field isn't the only way to determine what makes a good tank. That ignores the majority of the essential aspects of war and is unrealistic. We will investigate whether or not the Sherman is deserving of its reputation. Many of the arguments used to illustrate the Sherman's limitations are based on heavier, newer German tanks. However, to fully comprehend the Sherman, one must first understand the difficulties confronting Allied militaries at the time. One of the primary reasons why the Germans had heavy tanks during the war, while the Western Allies did not until the very end, was simply logistics. The Sherman was designed to take advantage of existing logistics. It was designed to fit on a standard railroad flat car or inside a ship and be craned out. By design, it could be built by the auto industry and had a large number of spare parts available. Engineers had to strike the perfect balance between weight and performance to increase the number of vehicles per shipment. Germany did not have to worry about such restrictions because they used trains to transport their vehicles across the continent. The Sherman was limited in many ways from the start. Despite this, it has a lot of great qualities. Production of M4 Sherman began in 1941, and the tank saw its first action in 1942. The tanks weighed about 60,000 pounds each, had a top speed of 30 miles per hour, and could travel as far as 120 miles. As a medium tank, the Sherman was easier to transport onto the beaches of France, and was light enough to cross many more bridges that heavy tanks couldn't. The Sherman 75mm M3 short barrel gun could deliver knockout punches against early war Panzer III and Panzer IV tanks. Furthermore, the tank's sloped frontal armor was effective at deflecting incoming German fire. The Sherman was a perfect fit for the US Army's medium tank requirements. It was small enough to ship overseas. Early war Shermans were more than capable of engaging almost all enemy armor, as well as fortifications and dismounted troops. However, its advantage dwindled as heavier German tanks entered the fray. The Sherman remained relevant due to its superior numbers, reliability, improved logistical support, and collaboration with the rest of the military, such as artillery, tank destroyers, and air support. The Sherman was frequently criticized for its infamous tendency to catch fire when hit, but this is unfair. The Sherman's volatility was primarily due to its ammunition storage. Since ammunition was stored in the turret, hull sides, and hull floor, a hit in the side would almost certainly hit ammunition. Similarly, when exposed to flames, the gasoline would easily ignite. The issue with this argument is that practically all comparable tanks, including the T-34, Panzer IV, Tiger, and Panther, also kept their ammunition in these locations, and all but the T-34 had petrol engines. This implies that the Sherman's combustibility was not unique. Burning was a common problem with other tanks of the era, and was not specific to the Sherman.
However, the US did make an effort to address this, first installing applique armor over weak points, and then adding wet ammunition racks. According to studies done on M4 Sherman tanks, for every 1.89 shell penetrations to a tank, the tank would catch fire 82% of the time. The solution was to place the ammunition in wet storage, which essentially placed the ammunition around water pockets. This significantly reduced the burn rates of Shermans, making them one of the least flammable tanks of the war, with only 10 to 15 percent of them burning after a hit. Large spring-loaded hatches and a floor hatch enabled a speedy exit from the vehicle in the event of a fire. The Sherman's major strength lay in its sheer numbers. It was another example of the United States industrial prowess during World War II, when factory workers and factory output helped the Allies win the war as much as soldiers, sailors, and airmen in battle. Companies ranging from Pullman Car Company to Ford Motor Company produced approximately 50,000 Shermans, the second most produced tank throughout the war, after the Russian T-34. In contrast, the Tiger I and Tiger II both had production runs of less than 1,500 and 500 respectively. The American factories were able to collaborate, standardize the tank, and produce them in massive numbers. There would be even more Shermans to replace each one the Germans destroyed. Despite early design problems like this, the tanks were mechanically reliable and effective, increasing the crew's confidence in their vehicles. This is why it was one of the primary weapons workhorses for the United States during the war, and why it is possibly the most important tank series of World War II. They were also able to maintain a high degree of operational readiness. The Sherman's design allowed for future upgrades. The tank's turret ring was unusually large for its size, larger than the Panther's, allowing it to easily accept future gun upgrades and improve crew comfort. The tank's tall stature provided more space for the crew inside, allowing them to operate much more effectively than in foreign designs. Additionally, it allowed a wide range of engines, which resolved the issue of engine shortages impeding production. Later upgrades enhanced the tank's combat capabilities, with the M4A3E2 Jumbo Sherman, and the up-gunned British Firefly. When Shermans were upgraded to the 76mm M1, they were capable of taking out Tigers at close range. However, tank-on-tank -tank battles with these vehicles were extremely rare. As a result, many crews preferred the 75mm gun to the more powerful 76mm gun, because it fired a much better high-explosive round against the more numerous soft-skinned vehicles and troops. The Sherman was designed with ease of construction, maintenance, and repair in mind. A suspension bogey could easily be removed from one tank and placed onto another, since they employed interchangeable parts. In a similar manner, the front-mounted transmission and its housing could also be entirely unbolted and removed. Additionally, the crew was better protected in this arrangement. The M4 Sherman was also simple to repair and recover. This can be a deciding factor in the outcome of any battle. Not all tanks are destroyed in battle, many were simply disabled, having been detracted or having had their engines cooked. One of the most important factors to consider when designing a tank, is its ability to service and return to battle. The M4 Sherman performed admirably in this regard.
The Sherman Tank Series would be the only tanks produced to see action in every theater. The tanks were used everywhere, and sold to other nations by the United States. Sherman tanks were given to Britain on lease, which received over 17,000 of them, as well as France and the Soviet Union, which received 657 and 4,035 tanks respectively. The remaining tanks were allocated to the U.S. military. From an objective standpoint, the Sherman is an outstanding all-rounder, that thanks to its adaptability, was able to compete with much newer and more advanced vehicles later in the war. Its easy maintenance kept them running, and its ease of production kept new ones on the way. Its gun was perfectly adequate against the majority of the targets it encountered, and upgunned versions could handle almost anything else. Crews worked in relative comfort, and if it was hit, later models were among the safest to be in and escape from. In a strange way, the Sherman tank was one of those tanks that wasn't the best in any individual category, but ended up being arguably the best overall tank of World War II. It had weaker armor and armament than the Panther and Tiger I, but it was easier and less expensive to mass produce, and it was more reliable. Its manufacturing costs were higher than that of Soviet T-34s, but T-34s were unreliable and prone to breakdown, whereas the M4 had better radios for communication, and better optics for shooting. Rather than focusing on a superior tank, the United States was forced to produce a whole mess of tanks that were just good enough. That's exactly what the Sherman was. Supplemented by tank destroyers and supported by air cover, American tank columns rolled across Europe and smashed German defenses on their way to Berlin. If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.